Hello, I'm Benjamin Schlosser, and I'm going to present you the paper Financial Backed Covert Security, which is a joint work with Sebastian Faust, Kamita Sai, and David Kressler. This work belongs to the area of multi party computation, short MPC. MPC in general deals with protocols that allow distrusting parties to compute some function on private inputs. And typically, we require the security guarantees, correctness, and privacy to hold for these protocols. When analyzing the security of a protocol, we need to specify an adversary model. There are different classes of adversaries. On the one side, there are semi-honest adversaries. These adversaries follow um, the protocol description as it is described. Um, they try to learn additional information from the interaction with other parties. On the other side, there are malicious adversaries. These adversaries may behave arbitrarily. In particular, they may deviate from the protocol description. While security against malicious adversaries provide a much higher level of security, um, semi-honestly secure protocols are still way more efficient. As a middle ground between efficiency and security, Aumann and Lindell proposed security against covert adversary. These type of adversary may deviate um, arbitrarily from the protocol description, but it is only willing to cheat if it's not getting caught. Let's take a closer look at covert security. A covertly secured protocol needs to guarantee that if there is some malicious party that cheats in the protocol execution, then with a fixed probability called the deterrence factor epsilon, this cheating will be detected. In, on the contrary, um, with probability one minus epsilon, cheating will be undetected. The notion was extended by Asharov and Orlandi um, with the notion of publicly verifiable covert security, short PVC. Here, COVID, um, the covertly secure protocol is extended by two algorithms. The blame algorithm takes the view of an honest party as input after cheating is detected and generates a certificate. This certificate is then or can then be passed to any third party, which utilizes the judge to verify the validity of the certificate. If it's a valid certificate, then the third party will be convinced about misbehavior of the corrupted party. The definition of PVC um, defines this judge algorithm as non-interactive. This has the advantage that the certificate can be sent to any third party um, later on, even if the party does not contribute to the protocol execution at the beginning. While the intuition of PVC is that due to the publicly verifiability, the deterrent effect is in, should be increased. However, we observe that there is a problem in settings like the internet where party can hide behind digital identities, and these identities can easily be changed. Therefore, our goal is to con connect um, detected cheating directly with financial punishment. Our contribution is threefold. First, we present the definition of our new notion called financially backed covert security, short FBC. Then we present construction of FBC protocols. In total, we present um, three different or constructions for three different classes of protocols. All our constructions benefit from very efficient verification of misbehavior. And as a third aspect, we evaluate our construction and provide benchmark results. Let's start with our notion of financially backed covert security. Here, we extend the model that besides the parties that want to execute some protocol, we have a so-called judge party. Let me emphasize that this is different to the judge algorithm of a PVC protocol. Here, we have a party that may interact with other parties. At the beginning, all parties send some coins to this judge party, which um, which are kind of security deposits. Then the parties execute some covertly secure protocol. Here, the judge does not need to contribute. Afterwards, the algorithm can use the blame algorithm. So each party can, each honest party can execute the blame algorithm for himself um, as using his view as an input to check if the other party was maliciously during the execution. In case there is no, no malicious behavior detected, um, the parties execute a so-called punish protocol, which due to no cheating happened, just sends back 
the security deposits to the other parties, uh, to, the, to the honest parties. So in case um, there is a malicious party, then due to the covert secret protocol, the blame algorithm will detect cheating with a fixed probability. In this case, the output of the blame algorithm um, will be some certificate that is used as, as input to the punish protocol. At the end of the punish protocol, which um, might require interaction between the parties, the, um, the security deposits are only sent back to the honest parties. The security deposits of the malicious party will be burned. We require two security properties um, of FPC protocols. The first one is called financial accountability. It states that if an honest party detects cheating, then there exists also a corrupted party that loses its deposit. Another the second property is called financial defamation freeness and state that the adversary cannot force an honest party to lose its deposits. For, for why these um, security properties are analog to PVC protocols, <laughs> we are the first to present formal security games for both properties. We now turn to the question, how to instantiate a judge party. While the definition in general allows that just a single party acts as its judge, our construction utilizes blockchain technologies. This way, instead of putting trust into a single party, we, can, um, we need to trust the correctness of the system, which is based on an honest majority assumption. In addition, blockchain technologies have several advantages um, several advantages and properties. First one is that most of the blockchain technologies, um, for most of the blockchain technologies, an integral part is to, um, to maintain um, a ledger where parties possess some coins and can transfer these coins between them. The second aspect is that many, smart, uh, many blockchain technologies allow the execution of so-called smart contracts. These are small programs which enable money transfer based on predefined rules. Therefore, our construction on high-level work that at the, at the beginning, the party sent a security deposit to a smart contract, then the parties execute a covertly secure protocol. Next, in case there is some cheating detected, um, the parties engage in a punish protocol where Alice can use the certificate as input. And if there is some was some cheating, then only the honest party gets his money back. Here we need to take special care of the complexity of the punished protocol of the, or of the, to be precise, of the judge party in the punished protocol, because for every, um, for every information that needs to be stored on the smart contract and every operation that needs to be executed on the smart contract, we need to pay fees. For example, for Ethereum, we need to pay in gas. Before heading to over construction, um, let me first introduce or mention an important building block we use throughout um, our construction. And this is a Merkle tree. A Merkle tree allows to commit to a set of data chunks here, X1 um, to X8. Um, and the Merkle tree root constitutes a commitment on all of these values. In addition, it's easy or it's efficiently uh, it's sufficiently possible to prove that a specific data chunk is indeed part of the Merkle tree. To this, we create a so-called Merkle proof, which, which consists of all these hash values that are siblings of these values that sit on the path from the data chunk um, until the, uh, to the uh, Merkle tree root. So this allows um, to create a Merkle proof with only logarithmic many values, um, where n is the number of data chunks. So now our first construction yield an input independent protocol. Such a protocol can be used for the offline phase or the pre-computation phase of so-called offline online protocols. For example, speeds and authenticated garbling. These um, offline online protocol works on a high level that they use an offline protocol where the parties only use some random values as input to set up some correlated randomness. Then this correlated randomness can be used to speed up the online phase where the party actually used their inputs to get the output of the function evaluation. 
Here, the first part is um, totally independent of the secret inputs of the parties. We now take a look how can we construct such an F, um, how can we construct an FVC protocol for such an input independent protocol. As a starting point, we start with a, with a semi-honest um, version of this online protocol. And then we use the cut and choose and porch, which means we not execute not just once the um, semi-honest offline version, offline protocol, we execute it several times where the party uses different um, random values as input. And then at the um, end of the cut and choose, in the opening um, phase of cut and choose, we open all but one of these instances. For all the open instances, we reveal the inputs that are used so that we can verify if the parties um, behave correctly in this execution. Since we leaked the, uh, the inputs in these phases, we have to throw them away. However, there is still one instance left which can be used for the online execution. As a next key feature, we require that the um, behavior of the parties, parties through, um, throughout the protocol execution are deterministic based on the random values used uh, as inputs. This can easily be achieved by um, deriving all random choices from these random inputs. As a next key feature, we require that the parties sign a public transcript after the protocol execution but before the opening phase of the cut and choose protocol. And as a fourth feature, we require that for all the opening opened instances, the parties um, obtain a publicly verifiable initial state or publicly verifiable um, um, inputs. This can easily be achieved by first sending signed commitment at the beginning and then in the opening phase of the cut and choose, the parties get to know decommitment values um, for the other parties' um, um, inputs. All of these key features are already provided by known input independent PVC protocols. Um, in particular, there exist generic compilers from semi on security to PVC security, which also provide these um, features. So we can directly use such a PVC protocol and transform it into an FPC protocol. Now, a natural question is, is it just possible to take the judge algorithm of a PVC protocol and let it run by the judge, judge party of the FPC protocol? To see the problem with this approach, let's have a closer look at the verification of just a single instance. So to verify, um, we start, each party starts the protocol execution within some initial state. For input independent protocols, this initial state just constitutes or exists of the um, random value you set input. Next, all, next the uh, behavior in, in each round can be computed using some compute round function. This function takes as input a state of the previous round together with a set of messages that were received in the previous round. Since there are no messages received um, before round one, we start with an empty set. The function computes an updated state together with a, a set of messages, in this case, only one message that, is, that are sent to the other parties. So next they exchange messages and they, ex they perform the same step again. All random choices, that need to be done in this compute round function can be derived from the state. So this means that the compute round function is totally deterministic. This is necessary to, um, to allow for verification later on. Now verification works that given the state and all messages that were received by some party, we can recompute the compute round function for each round of this party. And then we can compare the message that were sent during the real protocol execution with the messages that should be have been sent. And most of the known PVC protocols, in particular, these one that can be obtained using the generic compilers, require that a, a third party um, recomputes the whole protocol execution um, to detect cheating. And this is not plausible for smart contracts because protocol execution might require too much um, computational effort. So in um, 
Instead, um, we extend, we use the same formalization. So we use the compute round function, um, which on input a state and a set of message, compute an updated state and um, a set of messages. And now when Alice wants to send a message to Bob in the first round, it sends the message that is, that is intended to Bob together with a set of hashes where each message that should that, that is sent to some other party is hashed and then the set of hashes is given to, um, to Bob. This is an explicit way how to formalize the public transcript property. And finally, we add a commitment on the, the intermediate states in the form of a hash of the state. The same is done by Bob. And after the last round, all the message hashes are used to compute a Merkle tree, as we, as we have seen before. And then the parties exchange um, signatures on the roots of these hashes. This is done for the message has, hashes as well as for the states. We can order the message and the states in such a way that um, the um, that, uh, ordering is uh, unique and all the, message, all the parties sign the same um, roots. roots. Now, what does it help to have these intermediate um, commitments on the, on the intermediate states? So now take a look at um, how can Bob check if Alice behaves correctly or behaved correctly. So Bob knows for all rounds, the messages um, that were sent by Alice to Bob together with the hashes that was, um, of the messages that were sent from Alice to some other parties and the intermediate state commitments. In addition, it knows uh, signatures on the roots of the Merkle trees over the hashes, the message hashes and the states. And due to the um, publicly verifiable initial state property, we also have the state, the initial state of some party, of, of all parties. And then Bob can recompute all messages that should have been sent by Alice together with the intermediate states. Now let's assume um, Bob detects some malicious behavior. For example, Bob detects that Alice sent to some party M in round K an incorrect message. This means that all messages um, before um, this, this message are correct, but then this is the first message that is, that is incorrect. And this message is also part of the public transcript, which was, um, um, which uh, was signed or which um, where the, the Merkle tree root was signed by Alice. Now in the punishment protocol, Bob can create a certificate and send this one to the judge where the certificate um, contains the signatures on the commitments on the, Merk on the message hash hashes together with the states. So the signature on the Merkle tree root for the states. Um, the state of the previous round of Alice, so of round K minus one, together with all messages that were received in round K minus one by Alice and the incorrect message. Now, the last three um, components are all sent together with Merkle proofs. These Merkle proofs um, show that um, the messages and the state are indeed part of the Merkle trees um, that were assigned by Alice. And now, um, after checking that the signatures and the Merkle, Merkle proofs are correct, the judge can execute this compute round function based on the previous state. So state, the state of the, after the round K minus one and the messages that were received to obtain the messages that should have um, been sent by Alice in round K. And finally, um, the judge can make the, make the, judge, the, the check whether this message is correct or not. So whether, whether the um, send message was the right one or not. So let me emphasize that here, although our punishment protocol in general allows um, to be interactive, here we have, um, we can non-interactively send the certificate. In addition, um, we just require the judge to compute a single step of the protocol execution. So this is um, way more efficient than most of the known um, PVC protocols. We then have a second construction um, which yields input dependent protocols. Um, and here the parties directly use um, the, the, the secret inputs 
um, for the computation. So we need to take special care that the privacy of these secret inputs um, is still guaranteed. For details, um, I like to refer to our paper. So next we had the question, so that all, all PVC or non-PVC protocol, as well as the construction one and two, require that after the execution um, of the semi-honest protocols, the parties need to agree on a protocol transcript. So we had the question, can we relax on this requirement? That is, can we construct FPC protocols without any form of public transcript? This would reduce the communication cost for the honest execution. We answer this question with yes for the input independent um, case. And here we exploit the interactivity of the punishment protocol. So let me show up this picture again. We had before for the input independent case. And now um, we just remove the public transcript property. Um, and um, yeah, we can obtain such a protocol from taking a PVC protocol with public transcript and just removing the public transcript property. Now, in case we only have two parties, um, we always have a common transcript because messages are either sent or received. So we need to take a look at more than two parties to see what are the challenges. So um, let me give you this scenario here. Here we have an honest execution between three parties. In round K, um, Alice sends a message to Bob and about this message, Bob learns no information. So no information is given to Charlie about this, even not a hash of it. Then in the next round, in the round K plus one, Bob sends a message to, to Charlie. Um, and this message now depends on all previously received messages. So also on the message um, sent from Alice to Bob in round K. Now let's assume that Alice is malicious. Then he might send an incorrect message in round K. And although, um, although Bob behaves correctly, the message M prime now looks incorrectly um, from the point of view of Charlie. So how can we prevent that, um, um, that Charlie now accuses Bob of being malicious? To this, um, to this end, we introduce a two-phase punish protocol where all parties first submit um, accusations and then only the first accusation, so um, the one that um, claims the, the earliest message that is incorrect, it will, be, um, will be verified later on. So this way we identify one um, accuser and one blame party. And then the, the second question is, um, since we have no publicly signed transcript, how can we provide information about the messages to, to the judge party? And for this, um, one of the parties first suggests a message history in case they agree. Then we, the judge can use this message history in case they do not agree we use the so-called bisection protocol. This bisection protocol um, um, is an interactive protocol between these two parties and allow them to narrow down the disagreement to just a single message or the, the first message on which they disagree in the message history. Um, and then the judge can again recompute only a single round to identify um, which of these parties um, were maliciously. So what's more, for all of our three construction, we provide formal security proofs. Moreover, even um, we require just we require that um, the judge just to perform a single round. We could even improve more. That is, we can um, um, lower the, the requirements on the judge such that it only needs to recompute a single gate of an arithmetic circuit. Here we need inter um, interaction between the parties so we can apply this extension to all our construction. However, in, if, we apply it for, if we apply it for the first and the second construction, then um, this construction will also require an interactive punish protocol. And as a third aspect, um, we um, implemented a smart contract in solidity and we measured the gas costs to make an efficiency evaluation and providing benchmark results. So, um, as a conclusion, um, 
we we consider um, our FPC construction in Notion um, to have several advantages over PVC. Um, in particular, um, uh, we think that the effectiveness of the deterrence is, is increased because now we directly link detected cheating with financial punishment. Then we improve on the computation costs of the judge by um, requiring only to re-execute a single step or even a single gate, gate of the whole protocol. And finally, uh, we lower the communication costs in the honest execution by relaxing on the requirement of the public transcripts. Thank you very much for attention. If you have any question, feel free to get in contact with my colleague David or, or um, myself. Thank you.